Hey there, this is Rebecca. In the last topic, we covered the three states of matter, namely solid, liquid, and gas. So we looked at the different motion, attractive forces, density, volume of each one of these three states. If you're still unsure of the different states of matter, I would highly recommend to take a quick look at the link above. There is a video made for that. Today, we're going to combine the three states of matter to form a phase diagram. So how about let's get into it. The phase diagram, as you guys may have already seen, solid, liquid, and gas have these three different types of microscopic views. The first phase that we're going to look at when, when we go from solid to liquid, that phase is known as melting. So for example, right, when you have a solid ice cube, that's a solid. When you're melting it, it goes from a solid form to a liquid form. When we go from a liquid to a gas, that's also known as evaporation. So liquid, for example, when you're boiling water, after it reaches 100 degrees, where around that time when your boiler starts to, the electric boiler starts to click, telling you that the water is ready, you may be seeing some form of steam that's coming out of the spout. That part is the water that has evaporated from a liquid state to a gaseous state. The next phase is known as deposition, and that phase is going from a gas to a solid state. This forms the first phase diagram, um, going from solid to liquid to gas and back around. We're going to go the other way around now and take a look at what that phase diagram looks like. So when we go from a solid to a gas, it's also known as sublimation. When we go from a gas to a liquid, that's condensation. When we go from a liquid to a solid, that's also known as freezing. So notice, every state, you could have double arrows to them. You can go from solid to liquid. You can also go from liquid to solid. You can go from gas to solid. You can also go from solid to gas. So this forms the concept of the three states of matter and how they're connected. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at an example of a heating curve. And that pretty much puts what we've learned here visually onto a graph. If you like the content, it would mean so much to me if you can like or subscribe. So please hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video.